The fire on a massive cargo ship at Blood Island could burn for days. This is video from Sky 4 showing crews spraying water on the hull to protect the integrity of this ship. We just learned that Jacksonville Fire Rescue will be holding a news conference in about seven minutes at 5.05, and we will bring that to you live here on Channel 4 and on newsforjax.com. And this is a different angle now from the water level on Marine 4. Six of the eight firefighters who were injured in an explosion on the ship are now expected to be home from the hospital tonight. Two more will need surgery, but they are expected to recover. And News 4 Jax is covering every angle tonight, from uh, including the impact on the St. John's River. We begin with Jim Piggott for an update on the story, which is still developing. Jim. You know, we're going to find out more about those injured firefighters shortly with that news conference. They're setting up for that. I want to show you what I'm seeing right now here at the port. That auto cargo ship is still there. It's still burning, but this is the clearest it's been all day. There's still, there's still some smoke. You can see that they're still putting uh, water onto this, but it appears I don't see the smoke, the smoke pouring out as it was earlier today. So it, th it looks like they got some things under control. We're going to find out more about that in a bit. But here's what the fire chief and the Coast Guard were telling me a little bit earlier today. It's believed the fire and the explosion occurred on the seventh level. And it also gives a good indication of how intense this fire is and what those firefighters went through when the explosion occurred. There's four or so, five of them that have got some pretty significant injuries. It's gonna, they're going to be out a long time. Um, the recovery is going to be a, a long period. They're stable, but their, their recovery period is going to be long. They've got some significant hand burns, and as with hands we talked about this morning, you know, the hands are hard to you know, heal when, when they're burnt. Chief Power says right now the public should pray for their recovery and for their families. The concern now is combating the fire. The fire department and the Coast Guard are working together. The plan is not to go back inside the ship, but fight this from the outside by spraying massive amounts of water to try and cool down the vessel. To try to maintain two things, the integrity in the intact structure of the hull, and then uh, try, to main, try to keep the ship afloat. Because if we can do those two things, we can keep the ship cooled and intact and afloat, uh, we can minimize any threat to the environment or any continued threat to the public. And when the fire is out, they can then try to determine the cause. The ship, which is 10 years old, is registered in Norway and was loaded with a number of salvage or used cars. It's not known if it began with a car or something within the ship's machinery, and they will look to determine why the ship's fire compression or prevention system might have failed. We're going to be out here until the Coast Guard says they no longer need us. Obviously, there's some private contractors that are in here as well, but we have a, we have a mission to keep the public safe around here and to help protect uh, the, the private um, the companies that are working in here. Obviously, if there was to be a mishap, we need to be here to be able to rescue them as well. So what you're seeing right now, they're getting ready to talk to us. The chief is going to talk again, as well as the head of the port. So we're going to be hearing from them momentarily. But as you can see from that video in our story, things are looking a little different out here. The smoke has somewhat cleared, and we're going to find out more of the status of this and the investigation. For now, we're live at the port. Jim Pickett, Channel 4, the local station. Thank you, Jim. All right, several fireboats from Jacksonville Fire Rescue have been working around the clock, pumping water onto the sides of that ship. And we got a good glimpse of how firefighters are hoping to keep the situation from getting any worse. News for Jacks reporter Vic Michelucci spent the day on Marine Four with the Freedom Boat Club and joining us now live after just getting back. Vic. And Kent, we watched them work tirelessly for hours. We got as close as we were able to be, and we saw these firefighters just continue to try to do what they could to contain the flames and the smoke. But still, at times, you had a lot of smoke billowing out and some flames coming out on the main deck of this ship. Certainly a difficult process for all of those trying to keep this fire under control. The firefight continues, mainly from the water. What's the biggest fear right now? A catastrophic explosion and a hole crack. And she's sinking right where she's sitting. We're on board Marine 4 with the Freedom Boat Club and Captain John Eddy. He's a retired Coast Guard aviator and merchant ship captain, as well as a former firefighter. How dangerous of a scenario is this? Very. If this was a board ship and they were out at sea, they may have abandoned ship because of it. The toxics, 
gases and stuff in this thing. There's about 135 carcinogens just in that, in that smoke, and that's enough to kill a human. We watched as Jacksonville Fire Rescue shot water up and down the 600-foot Norwegian vessel. Inside, used cars and a lot of fuel for the fire. There's a lot of it on there. They've got 10, 15, 20,000 gallon diesel tanks on these boats. The goal is, Captain Eddie says, to keep the outside of the ship from getting too hot and cracking, which could cause it to sink. These fire boats are working around the clock, pumping water from the river onto that ship, and they're doing it especially because they can't necessarily put firefighters inside. It's just too dangerous. The Sky 4 helicopter overhead all afternoon, we saw flare ups, thick plumes of black smoke, flames, and we heard a few explosions inside. Rescuers say one blast last night injured nine firefighters, some seriously. The problem with this boat is, is that it's wide open inside on its decks because of the cargo that she carries. So if you could have a fire on one end of the deck and it'll travel all the way to the other end. And Captain Eddie there says it is not going to be easy to put this fire out. So we will likely continue to see firefighters working and some smoke and flare ups for the next couple days until they can finally get into that ship and render it safe once again. He also has environmental concerns. We did see several contractors out there monitoring the situation, making sure that the river and the wildlife around it are OK. We're live tonight. I'm Vic Michalucci, Channel 4, the local station. And Vic, Captain Eddie there said uh, there's a risk of catastrophic uh, in a hull failure there. Is there potential that this ship will ever sail again? Kent, surprisingly, he says yes. He thinks that this ship could survive the fire. He thinks that JFRD and the Coast Guard are doing a great job containing it, doing the best job that they possibly can given the current circumstances. And he says, yeah, you've got a big metal hull, you've got compartments, and it appears that if they put this fire out, the rest of the ship should be okay. Everything inside, though, severely damaged. All right, Vic Michalucci reporting live for us. Uh, thank you so much, Vic. And we want to go now to the news conference there uh, at Jacksport at Blunt Island. This is a very important moment for us as a community, as well as our brave heroes uh, that work for the Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department. Um, we are very grateful for the bravery and the quick response of each and every one of them. You know, what this is about is uh, partnership plays a vital role here at Port, play a vital role in this community. Want to thank JFRD, want to thank the Coast Guard, want to thank Customs and Border Patrol, JSO, and the other agencies that's been involved in this. Um, and uh, again, I ask that each and every home uh, find it in their heart to pray for these men and women that have been facing this uh, tragedy here in our community. Chief. Good afternoon. Thank y'all for coming. <clears throat> First, I want to start off and kind of along the same tone. I want to thank the community. Um, I tell you, the outpouring of support from this community is just unbelievable. We faced it last year when Captain Blon and I were, uh, and, and you know, dealing with the missing firefighters, and the, the outpouring of support is just humbling. And it, it, again, it's happening. Uh, you know, this community is a, it's an amazing community that we live in. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you to the community personally. Um, like I said yesterday, these are this is the most dangerous firefighting that we do um, as a group. I mean, it, uh, it it's it's there's just not a lot of you know a lot of, there's a lot of tragedy happens with shipboard firefighting. So um, the brave men and women of the, that, that work in the Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department, I just to them I want to say thank you as well. That uh, it takes a lot of courage to do what they do and what they were doing yesterday when you know when the tragedy happened. But I do have some good news, and the good news is that um, we've gotten all but three of our firefighters out of the hospital. They allowed some this afternoon to go home and be uh, treated on an outpatient basis, and that's that is that was great news when I got that this afternoon. We have three that are uh, that are remaining um, that are having to remain in the hospital. One in Jacksonville at uh, UF Health, and one and two in Gainesville at the burn unit down there. They're facing some surgeries, some more surgeries, some skin grafts, and that kind of stuff. They got a long road to hoe, like the other ones do. But uh, just keep them in your thoughts and prayers. 
So tonight uh, and, and, and throughout the day tomorrow, we'll just continue to be rotating crews. We've kind of downsized our part of the operation as the Coast Guard has kind of upsized theirs. Uh, the contractor that is in here with them, is uh, they're bringing more, more crew in and we're here just to support them and make sure that if something happens, we're here to support their mission and get them out and take care of them. But that's basically what JFRD is doing now is supporting the mission. Other than cooling the hull, as you see what's going on out there. And to that point, those boats um, that you see out there, that's JFRD's Marine Division. Um, Captain Blonde told me last night um, that our 70-foot fire boat, had it not been for that boat, that uh, that ship would have probably broken half and sank. That's, uh, just so you know, that boat, um, that's about a $6 million port security grant that we secured through our federal partners working with the port. Um, so that was very important when that happened years ago. So I just wanted to thank you all for your support in that boat. It, uh, it helped save the environment here, and um, I'm extremely proud to say that. Speaking of the Coast Guard, Captain Blonde, I've had, um, you know, had uh, a lot of time to work together here in the last year, and um, he is a, that, that organization is a great partner with JFRD. I mean, they work seamlessly with us, and uh, they support every need that we ask for, as we do with them, but Captain, I just wanted to thank you. Captain's uh, commanding officer is Admiral Eric Jones, and uh, anything that we reach out to him for, he reaches up his chain, and the Admiral provides for us. So I just want to say thank you to the Admiral as well. So with that, I'll turn it over to Captain Blonde, but uh, thank you again for the partnership that we have with you. Thank you, Chief Powers and Mr. Green. Uh, we stand alongside our, our partners here at uh, Jack's Port and at JFRD, and of course our thoughts and prayers remain with the injured firefighters as well, as this continues to be a very complex and complicated marine fire. Um, as I said yesterday, our primary goals uh, were to uh, maintain safety of the first responders, uh, remain, maintain safety of the public, which is why we continue with air monitoring and pollution monitoring. And then beyond that, we wanna keep the vessel intact and afloat. And that would not have been possible without the uh, JFRD fireboats. And today, with the addition of uh, Gallagher Marine and uh, Resolve Marine Group, which have uh, arrived on scene to bring additional technical expertise and direct firefighting support, uh, we continue to have success in, uh, in maintaining the intact uh, capacity to the vessel. And uh, most importantly, we're minimizing uh, potential for pollution or for uh, any greater disaster. And that's, uh, that's the number one goal here now is to, uh, to keep this ship in one piece uh, so that we can uh, continue to keep the port operating and uh, we can continue to minimize any potential for pollution. And with that, uh, we're happy to take any questions you may have. What exploded on the ship and are cars currently burning right now? There are cars in the top, uh, basically from the seventh deck up, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11, uh, we believe the cars are essentially a total loss at this point. Firefighters at egress from the ship yesterday explained that they weren't even burning at that point, they were melting. So we feel that probably very few cars left on the upper portion of this ship. But importantly, the fire has gone up and not down. Uh, most of the machinery spaces and the, the liquid load, uh, the fuel is all in the lower portion of the ship. And uh, those, uh, those temperature, air, those areas right now remain in the 90s and 100 degree range, uh, which is about as successful as you can be uh, in blocking the uh, temperature from coming down and keeping the fire moving up. Uh, so in terms of marine firefighting, that's why this has been a success at this point. Is there a chance it could sink? There is always a chance uh, that a that vessel could either sink or break up if we were to have some kind of catastrophic failure. That's what really the, the uh, skill set that we've brought in today with Resolve and with Gallagher is that specific marine uh, firefighting capability. And we have brought in uh, structural engineers and mechanical and naval engineers from the Coast Guard. We're working together and we've at this point isolated deck six. Everything above that is where the fire is being contained and we are essentially defending everything below that to keep the temperatures down and to keep those machinery spaces and any of the liquid load areas uh, free from uh, from temperature and or fire. What is it exploded listing? yesterday? The list is only about a half a degree, uh, which is well within the range of the RORO and it's actually maintained a half a degree for quite some time. Uh, that's, a, that's a, actually a very good sign and thank you for the question because the other thing we're looking at is draft and the draft has maintained absolutely steady. So that means that we're not putting additional firefighting water into the vessel. We're not creating a sinking situation, nor are we uh, compromising stability. Can you tell us what exploded yesterday? We, we won't know for sure until we do the investigation. Uh, the most likely was that we, uh, we ended up with a, a high degree of uh, containment uh, that initially when the CO2 system went off, that will shut a lot of the baffles and dampeners to try to secure that area so that you try to starve the fire of oxygen. Uh, when you do get fire into that environment though, and you have it contained, you tend to build pressure. And the most likely from what our engineers and what the salvers are looking at now is that pressure built up with heat and then it, uh, it essentially off gas through the uh, upper part of the ship. Chief, those specialized crews that were coming in, what's their
their plan? Have you sat down with them to get crews back on the ship? So currently, like I said, we're just here to support Gallagher and that group as they go on there. They're going to tomorrow morning, I think they're going to be going on board and doing some surveying, trying to figure out what the next plan of attack is. And we're basically going to be here in a, in a rescue mode should one of them, you know, uh, have, a, have an issue inside the ship. Can you talk about the injuries of those firefighters? Very severe. Are they going to recuperate? What's going to happen? Um, I'm, I'm concerned about some of them. Obviously, they're... Um, they had some severe burns, especially the circumvental burns that were around their hands. Hands are very difficult, uh, you know, because of the dexterity and, you know, and all that's involved in the hands and getting that to heal. Um, we're really concerned. Some of them had some facial burns. Uh, some ears were burned up pretty good, and it's gonna, some of it's going to require skin grafts. Um, so we're really concerned about a couple of them. I think they're going to make a recovery, but it's going to be, a, you know, as I said today earlier, it's going to be a long road to hoe before they, they're going to be able to come back to work. Are you all still fighting this on the water, or have you had, had personnel go back on the ship? I know you mentioned yesterday you kind of back so I'll, I'll let captain blonde speak to most of that but we have not put any more personnel back on the ship um because we've turned it over to our partners you know uh, with the coast guard and the private contractors but I, they have made one recon mission in the ship today um and it was a very short one just to get in and get some temperature readings and and check the atmosphere for the oxygen content um but captain you want to follow up on that yeah, Space Data Chief Powers Point, uh, they did get on board only in about the aft third of the ship, um, and it was below in the colder area that we're trying to defend is where they were, where there has no, been no fire or excessive heat. In fact, that's where they found the heat today to be in the 90-degree range, uh, which, again, is about as much uh, it's about as successful as we could hope for. Has there been any assistance from QA? And this might be a question for Jack Sport. Do you know how deep that area where the ship is right now, the water, how deep it is there? Uh, yes, it's roughly about 38 feet there. Uh, so, you know, at birth. And so, we, we, you know, it's holding steady, as, uh, as the chief and the captain said. Um, for the port, and a question on, about the company. Have you had any problems with this company? If you can step in front of the mic. Sure. Um, are there any other problems in the past? Are they going through any financial problems? We've been getting all kinds of reports. Uh, none that we know of, Jim. Um, it's been a steady company, a steady business. Um, typically, you know, they're used vehicles. They're going to West Africa. Uh, a little over 800 uh, units were loaded uh, in Freeport, Texas, before coming to Jacksonville. Uh, once they came to Jacksonville, over, a little over 1,500 units was loaded. And then once the plan was, um, the sale plan was when it left Jacksonville, it was headed to Baltimore. And there will be another couple hundred units loaded, and then it will be off to West Africa area to several ports there. And what happens now? I mean, this is going to be here for some time. Correct? That's correct. And is it affecting other commerce here, or, or is it blocking that part of the channel there, or what? Well, we have multiple Roro, you know, berths. Um, as you know, um, you know, Jacksonport, Jacksport has grown tremendously. Um, that birth service, you know, other customers, but we also have another one in the channel. You know, anytime you lose something, obviously you're going to have a little bit of, 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 um, of, of loss there, but we're able to flex and, and be able to make it work. You know, the most important thing for us right now is not to worry about commerce, but to worry about the firefighters that actually was hurt during this time. I mean, you know, we'll work through the commerce part, you know, but, but we, we need to definitely be praying for those individuals and their families. And how do you pronounce this company? Grimaldi. Grimaldi? Grimaldi. Grimaldi is the contract company. The shipping line is Hogue, Hogue Auto Lines. So Grimaldi, Grimaldi chartered the vessel from uh, Hogue. You know, every company don't have their own fleet or they don't have enough. So they end up chartering from different from different companies. It's a Norwegian company. First question is, how can the community help these firefighters? <clears throat> As I said, as I said at noon today with Jim, um, prayer is the number one thing they need right now. Um, you know, the community is, is they've really reached out to us, they, you know, with food, drinks, that kind of stuff that they're really helping there. But the biggest thing I'm asking for, and you know, as I've asked before and the community came through is prayer for them. That's what they need. And you're keeping an eye on the environmental impacts. Last night you said nothing had seeped into the water. Is that still the case today? 
Yes, uh, as of now, we still do not have any uh, any visible sheening, and uh, we have about 3,500 feet of boom standing by. As soon as the vessel is uh, cold enough to safely boom, we'll actually wrap it around completely. Right now, most of that boom is already in the water, so that we can rapidly move it in if we do start to see pollution. So that is uh, among our goals. That's very near the top is being able to contain any potential pollution threat. Is there any indication on what started the fire initially? No, that'll take quite some time before we'll we'll be able to determine that through the investigation. Well, currently, how many marine units do you guys have in the water combined? Uh, between five and ten at any given time. Um, I can't tell you what's in the water right now. We've been swapped. We, in fact, you're right. At, we are right at a crew swap moment at the at right now. Um, I've had up to three to four Coast Guard vessels in the water. JSO has been out here. The uh, United States Navy actually is providing a tug assist, and then we've had uh, I think most of JFRD's fleet on the water now, uh, performing a Herculean firefighting task now for nearly 24 hours. And I can't say enough about what those fireboats have done to protect this vessel and this community. The 21 crew members, are they from Norway and are they stuck here or have they been sent back? Or the crew members are presently with Customs and Border Protection. Uh, they're in a hotel, and uh, their company is working with the crew to, uh, to essentially to either get them home or to get them to another ship. Um, and uh, that, that, that'll that be up to the company and uh, Gallagher Marine and uh, Hogue Line. Mr. Keith, we see one um, fire ladder truck. How, how tall is that ladder out there? That's a 100-foot that's a aerial. That's a 100-foot ladder truck? Yes, sir. So, I mean, it looks like it's got a pretty good grasp on what it's doing now. Is it, are you guys planning on them? They rotate out, or is that truck there? That will leave. That's that's one of our spare ladder trucks that we brought out, and that, that, that ladder will stay there in operation, just cooling the aft end of the ship, um, and we'll just rotate crews through that can operate it throughout the night. Looks a lot better than it did a couple of hours ago. Have Looked a lot better changed. than it did at noontime. Yeah, has something changed? Yeah, um, uh, Captain, you want to talk about what happened at noon, what r really created all that with that hydraulic room? And so as the fires continued to burn higher into the ship, it's been working itself from deck to deck. And at one point in the evening, uh, actually about noon today, uh, it reached a point on the ship where it got to some uh, contained tanks, uh, some pressurized tanks. There was some acetylene and things like that that we knew were up there um, that uh, when, once they became a uh, once the fire caught up to those, there was an explosion at that point, a small uh, controlled explosion, um, but it did not cause any additional damage to the ship. Um, at that point, uh, the fire has now moved up to the 11th deck, which is the last cargo deck, we believe, and we're watching that from uh, IR capability, infrared capability, uh, which is actually, again, a good sign because it means the fire is moving up through the ship uh, to the top as opposed to moving down where we've been trying to uh, defend it. That'll be entirely up to the ship and to uh, to their to their uh, contractors to take a look at. Um, we'll we'll do a full investigation, but in terms of what they ultimately do with the ship, that's up to the company. You mentioned that cars were melting. What were the highest temperatures that you read? Uh, we know that it reached well over a thousand degrees in certain spots just based on what we're seeing um, with the metal fatigue and the scarring. Uh, but at, at right now, for the, for the most part, we've been able to keep the hull down to about 350 degrees or less, uh, which again is what, what, what is allowing us to keep the vessel intact. Do you know what station these firefighters were from? Um, there, were, there was a group of those, two of them, uh, two of them were some of our uh, chief officers, which are supervisors. Um, and a group of them were from one of our special operations teams. Um, I'm not ready to say quite yet what stations they're from. Their families, they're still getting some family members in town.